you see in the black vortex. You see yourself. You see it's a, it's a power up, man. Well, welcome to the PK Comic Book 411. I know it's been a long time, people, and I had to go through a remodel. I got totally, totally backed up, so there's all this catch-up to do. Right now, it's all going to be about Marvel. But first, what is PK Comic Book 411? It's not a review site. Uh, I'd rather do compare and contrast. What's happening? What are the answers to these questions? And also, I have some questions for you that I'd love for you to answer. Because I was relatively a noobler, man. Two years ago, I didn't know anything about anything. Um, I, I collected Moon Knight as a kid and a lot of the Image stuff, Supreme and stuff. Um, but yeah, I knew nothing. So I dove in headlong and I bit off a little bit more than I could chew and I tried to finish the internet. So again, no reviews, just compare and contrast. Um, Try to get more of associations between the writers and the arts and the different titles. Um, quick background about me. I invented a military trading card game. Um, it's a power. A little recognition there. Logo recognition. Logo recognition. Imagine that the cards are uh, pieces with movement and range. Special abilities. Um, but I went to all these conventions in 2012. And uh, there was a lot of people reading comic books. And I wanted to speak their language. So I... Went into it, and uh, man, I, I bit off more than I could chew. I mean, I have like 15, 16 per week now on a pull list, and that's not even counting the trades. I mean, I collected Moon Knight um, as a kid, so I knew about Brian Michael Bendis. But again, total noobler, but now I'm starting to get to know my stuff. Um, plus, you know, Disney's making all these movies. I was an actor since I was eight. Ricky Schroeder turned into Kurt Russell. Don't know how that happened, but I'm waiting for my role on Viking. Um, side note, I almost got the Steve Jobs uh, movie. I was going to be George Coates. I would have had a scene with Michael Fassbender, which we all know is the young Magneto. And it's another Brit playing an American. I'm thinking of Spider-Man. I mean, it's happening all over. You have these British guys playing Spider-Man, but they do a good job. All right, moving on. Um, I just want to give a couple points of order. I have moved to... Isn't it weird how I'm putting up Star Wars first and it's Marvel, which is Disney, and Disney bought Pixar, and Disney bought Marvel? See, those are the associations. Hopefully you're liking it already. But I went to uh, seven and one quarter silver bags um, with seven inch boards. Um, I need a sleeve a lot. Um, bag and board, sleeve. That's semantics. Um, so I'm, I'm doing that a lot, and it just seems to be easier for me, and I also don't have a binding um, when it gets so tight on a thick comic that you sort of almost feel like the black ink is streaking. Also, another thing that I do, um, if the flap is open, it means I need to read it. If I close it, tape shut, that means I read it. So if you have these un op uh, unclosed ones for a while, hey man, you need to start reading it, you're getting too far behind. And again, if you have 15 and you don't read it that week, and then you have 15 the next week, that's 30. If you're doing about 10 minutes a comic, that's, uh, what is it, five hours of reading? Um, <laughs> so that's why there's gonna be a lot of titles right now, but there's gonna be multiple issues per title. Uh, let uh, Oh, one more thing, when I do have a bunch that are stacked. I push them down. Get the air out before you put them in your short box or your long box. I need to get started. Um, Star Wars. Jason Aaron. Now, you may know Jason Aaron as uh, Thor. Um, God Butcher, etc. That's right here. He has a great hardback out. Um, he's also done a wonderful job with uh, the Hulk. And uh, right now, he's actually doing the female Thor. But they, they, gave, him they gave Star Wars uh, to Jason Aaron. And this takes place between um, episode four and five, if you will. Um, that would be after Star Wars and before Empire Strikes Back. So the uh, Death Star has just exploded. Um, this is a, a variant cover, as you can tell from this, 0231. Um, I'll explain those UPCs later. That's the Han Solo one. And then uh, so far, you know, the best part to me is the Darth Vader being a badass. And uh, this one was a little crazy because I saw that is sorry father I won't be a Jedi like you were and I thought he was raised by my by his uncle so I'm a little confused there if you know what I'm talking about and, and the answer to that please comment below like I said uh, there's also a Princess Leia but uh, like I said uh, Darth Vader is definitely my favorite part of this relaunch of the Disney Marvel Star Wars and he, here he's actually you're sort of he's the protagonist man he's making his own his own uh, army, if you will, to start the Empire Strikes Back. We don't really have much to say. There's, there's not a lot of dialogue, which is nice. And, you know, sometimes it's better to watch the comic versus, you know, read everything. Like way back when Miracle Man being 
definitely an example of a lot of reading. This is uh, Dr. Afra, sort of his sidekick for a bit, and he sort of has evil R2-D2 and evil CP-3O's, and it's, that, that's sort of nifty, you know? Um, but he needs an army, and he's going to get replaced, and, you know, Afra's his sidekick. So that's uh, one through four. And Kyrian Gillen I was always, wasn't always on my best side because of Iron Man number 17 and what he did with Arno. So he's under suspicion. Back up in time for you and go to events. Another thing I do is I do um, events and then multiple, you know, group, if you will, titles, and then I go to individual. That's just how I seem to organize everything because there's so much to read. So do you remember Axis? It was uh, nine issues. Um, Axis, Axis, and then we were calling it Sixus, and that's really Rick Remender continuing the first arc of Uncanny Avengers before he just really went off the reservation and started doing things with the apocalypse and Planet X and a rapture, and then, oh yeah, time, you know, everything's back to normal. Can't stand that. Reminds me of Age of Ultron where they did that, everything's back to normal. It's almost as bad as in literature or when you're writing, you make the ending, oh, and then I woke up. It's just can't do that. Just stop it. And now, apparently in the comic verse, I was doing that with timelines. But you have access. And basically, that to me is the DC analog, well, Marvel analog of DC's Forever Evil, where the bad guys are the good guys, and the good guys are the bad guys. And there was a little bit of fallout on this. We did have still uh, a superior evil uh, Tony Stark. Okay. A um, couple things happened with Nova and Carnage. So there's a little bit of um, long, longer lasting effects of, of Axis. And one of which is him continuing, this is Rick Remender, continuing Uncanny Avengers uh, 1 and 2, 1. It's like, I'm, it's, it's post-Axis, okay? It's counter-Earth. There's like animals on it. It's, it's, he just breaks long-standing continuity with the Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch not being the son and daughter of Magneto. I, I don't, you know, just don't know what Rick Remender's doing. Um... Anushia or something like that. That's the counter Earth with all the animal people. Um, it's all split up like all new X Men. Sabretooth dies twice. I swear he dies in this one, and he also dies in Magneto, I believe. Magneto number fifteen. Not spoilers. This is like months ago. I'm dropping this from my list. I'm so sorry. Um, it's too many titles. Rick Remender. Okay, um, we're flipping over to the end of Axis with Inhuman. Now. Inhumanity was supposed to be Matt Fraction, uh, husband of Kelly Sue DeConnick, who does Captain Marvel. Matt Fraction um, did a wonderful job with Hawkeye, but I think he got spread too thin. Just like Jeff Lemire, Justin Jordan, and there's another one that's come to mind that are getting spread too thin. But Charles Soule um, saved the day. And uh, this has a longer lasting effect of Rick and Remender's access by having Medusa being a little evil. It's not really long-lasting. I sort of got rid of it. However, I do want to bring this up. First and foremost, that reader is a wonderful, wonderful new character. The rights are owned by Charles Sewell and a guy named um, Stegman. I don't know who that is. Nubler, I don't know. Stegman. But uh, this reader guy should be the guy that's an Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., you know, the live action with Sky and, and uh, Phil Coulson, etc. on TV. That guy with the eyes over that, that should be reader. All he has to do is have that little card. He's doing the same teleportation thing. He even does sleep, like in D&D, &D, just sleep, but he has that thing. I think it just w would have been wonderful, but it could be a, a, a rights thing. Um, you know, you have Black Bolt having a lover's quarrel, a little uh, Easter egg. When he, um, before he walks out, he does something. Watch which one that he chooses when, before he walks out. Sort of nifty. Um, Love Charles Soul. when he said that I was listening to Arise, I knew exactly what song that was. That's by Sepultura, um, which is uh, Max Cavalera, and he actually split up from Sepultura, which is a heavy metal band with Brazilian backbeats. Um, he, he left the band because they didn't mourn the death of his son enough in a car accident. Crazy! So he did the Cavalera Experiment and uh, Soulfly, etc. But, dude, I just... There's no more reader in this particular one. But man, I, I just love Charles Soule for that. Then we go into the uncanny in humans, right? And this is Charles Soule saving Matt Fraction's butt again. Um, this is what, I don't know Black, Belt, Black Bolt that much. It's like mm, Black Bolt is Madagascar. I forget, I forget 
Black Bull Thanagar or something like that. I forget the full name. Um, but this is what I wanted to see. Just him being around, being a badass. Fits in with the other storylines. Bravo. Um, and then when he speaks, oh man. But there's like these tendrils or something on the castle wall that look sort of organic. But I, mean, I guess that was the artillery. But really love it. Really, really love it. Um, now we're going to go into more of the group people. I got Uncanny X-Men and All New X-Men, and this is the world of Brian Michael Bendis, because he actually has two of them. Just like Hickman has New Avengers and Avengers, Brian Michael Bendis has both of these. So, in Uncanny X-Men, you have Cyclops trying to recruit Matthew Malloy. Now, Matthew Malloy is like the most powerful mutant ever that Charles Xavier was trying to hide and block his powers. So that's the sort of ongoing storyline of this. It doesn't really work. Magneto steps in. Um, it's also the... Oh, God. Jen... Oh, She-Hulk. Jen... Dang! Jen Carter? No, that's not it. Anyway, she's the lawyer, and she's reading uh, Charles Xavier as well. And uh, so, obviously, Cyclops tries to recruit Matthew Malloy. Things go bad. Um... Magic gets Doctor Strange's eye. It's, it's all it's, it's all copacetic, right? Um, now we introduce Eva Bell, and there's two annuals, and I have one of them. I think the other one's filed away, and she becomes very pivotal in this, Eva Bell. Um, so she goes to Professor X way back in time and said, hey, man, you need to solve this Matthew Malloy problem, so let's make sure he's not even born. Um, so this one I really want to, uh, this is just lovely. This is Eva Bell at her best, and I hope it's not a spoiler when it's, Get your shit together, Cyclops. Literally, that's this one. If you got to get one Uncanny X-Men and you haven't been following it, get 31. I, that's, that's a recommendation, not a review. Um, so, this is uh, Brian Michael Bendis' Daniel Mont, just the very end of, of Remender's train wreck. Now, Axis was very um, ambitious with all of the different characters, but to me it was just uh, very shallow that the good guys become bad, bad guys become good, etc. Um... Havoc is supposed to be still evil or turned, but I'm not really seeing that when he's talking to Cyclops. You know, Elder Cyclops is sort of turning himself in. It's nice bro moments, though, in this one. Um, Uncanny X-Men. Magic and Kitty go find a new mutant named Bo. This doesn't really fit with anything, but it was I guess it was just sort of a breather. This is one of the two annuals that does introduce Eva Bell that has the time traveling that affects everything from Professor X to Matthew Malloy. Um, she then, I think, splits everyone, yeah, she splits everyone up in various universes, and that's why I see Miles Morales. So there's this ultimate universe that comes into play as the younger, displaced, all-new X-Men are flipped around to ultimate, uh, universe. Um, it's sort of weird because they're the same age, so if they're all new and they're from the past and they got flipped to another universe, that universe is actually still back in time so that they're the same age. Does anyone realize that? Interesting. Maybe I'm the only one. Carmen Cruz versus Matthew Malloy in this one. Um, it's like the multiverse of DC, but Axis is the Trinity War and Forever Evil. Why do they write from the same playbook? Um, this one I want to point out because just like Trial of Green, Jean Grey, Battle of the Atom, when you have multiple... Um, titles over the same crossover. Now I'm starting to write these and put the Black Vortex all together. So as I, as I said before, I'm going to end with Black Vortex. But that has seven different titles. Now I'm just writing them there. So when I look through them, I'm like, oh man, I don't have 38 and 39. No, it's actually Black Vortex. So call me crazy. I'm writing on the actual plastic, you know. Um, but the one thing, I haven't seen the crazy power that we saw in Trial of Jean Grey that she learned, unlike the Jean Grey that we know instead of the younger one that was brought to the present. We haven't seen that, but we will, and I believe it's in Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, and I hopefully will remember by the cover. And a lot of times I write like whether the cover matches, because I'm trying to remember so much before I make these things and file them away. Um, this is uh, Venom making his rounds in Guardians of the Galaxy. It's like Vortex parallel. Like, you know, the Vortex is going through, powering up everyone. It's pretty much what it is, is power up. And uh, basically Venom's going to go through all the Guardians of the Galaxy. That's sort of trite to me. Um, again, the black Vortex thing. Oh, this is really important. I remember this one. Which you can't tell by this, but I remember to let you guys know. This is actually a very important one because Brian Michael Bendis gives you the origin stories of symbiotes. Now, I know there's at least three or four of them I can think of, Carnage and Venom, etc. But 
This gives you the origins of symbiote because they're, they're Clintar. I think they're from the planet Clintar or they are Clintars. And they have this whole consciousness. Very interesting. I'm pretty sure that is brand, brand new. Again, in Brian Michael Bendis' world, we have this spinoff, Guardians Team Up. The only reason why I did this was to actually get to number three, which started, uh, which was in Black Vortex. Um, I'm going to drop this from the poll. Chitar Chitari are introduced because of the movie rights, because of Korean Scroll, something like that. I, I don't, this is just a money grab to me. It's a good try, um, but I think it's just a money grab. Art's okay, too. Guardians Team Up number two, and again, Black Vortex number three. And now let's get into the world of uh, Jonathan Hickman. <laughs> yeah, you still with me? You still with me? <sighs> First thing I want to point out is that when you have times run out, and there's something called Secret Wars that you guys may know, but I, have no, I know nothing about Secret Wars. But if it goes five, four, two, right, two, two, there's the two come out in the same month. I don't know. I can't, I can't freaking tell. But the reason why I want to start out with New Avengers is because this incursion storyline is actually from the New Avengers. And Avengers was part of it, but that was more of the builders, the makers, and yeah, they, they all come together because Jonathan Hickman's just crazy intelligent like that that can do 50-issue story arcs. Um, but it's really the new Avengers storyline that is Time Thrones out now. Like there's multiple parallel universes going in and you can hop from planet to planet and kill one and that universe stays alive, etc. Um, so, in this one we have S.H.I.E.L.D., but it's it's versus the Avengers and the versus Avengers World, which is another title altogether. Um, it's sort of a cool chess game strategy narration that they have there. I sort of like that. Um, between number 28 and 29, there's really no transition. It's sort of odd. I wasn't really sure. And apparently Hank Pym is Yellow Jacket, which just doesn't make sense to me. I thought he was Ant-Man, but now that's Scott Lang. It's a little confusing for me, but Hank Pym is definitely Yellow Jacket. Um, and he's part of the multiverse travel team. So then you have, uh, now, we're, well, now we're two months, we're five, four, two, two, two. So Hank Pym then tells the story of being in the multiverse and there's now a new thing called the Beyonders and they're taking out all the universes and then the universe comes together to make some multiverse entity and they take them out, it's very odd. Um, Beyonders sort of came in out of nowhere, by the way. So uh, Doctor Strange is back. And uh, I love that we actually know who this guy, the Rob Boom Blah Lal, who's supposed to be the main dude of all of these different map makers and the guys that are going and taking out the worlds and stuff. The, the guy that's behind it all is revealed in this. I'm not going to spoil it for you. And this, I, I just, if you need what, if you're not even paying attention to any of this, get this one. New Avengers number 32. It's amazing. After all of those issues, including the 40 from Avengers, this guy, Jonathan Hickman, <laughs> literally changes the scope in this particular one. Um, Thor gets his hammer back from an unworthy Thor with two R's. Sort of crazy, but really good writing behind it. Um, but this is pretty much the finale in a very, very big way. Um, Night Mask sort of reverse. Every time he uses his power, he gets younger, which is sort of interesting. Um, the Abyss and Ex Nilo do some crazy, crazy things. Uh, lots, lots of changing, too. Starbrand as well. Really love the Starbrand character. Um, and all the Infinity characters are basically, there's, there's something to be said. Again, no spoilers. Um, and then at the very end, I, I mean, there, if you're not liking the female Thor, get this then. Okay? That's, that's what I'm saying. Get this if you're not liking the female Thor because there's one part that is just so quintessential Thor Odinson. It's awesome. Um, okay, oh, talking about Starbrand, this is a 34.2, even though the UPC says uh, 002 first variant, first edition. Just so you know, the first three letters are the issue number, then the variant, and then the printing. Um, Really great, though. I always like the uh, sort of origin stories or definition stories because I'm so new, I need to know what these people are about. Stay with me. I'll go even faster. <laughs> all right, so now we're on uh, Avengers going all the way to, okay. Avengers number 40. Get ready here. Avengers number 40. Um, the previously is actually from New Avengers number 28. Don't like how Hickman's doing that, but I guess he's just giving you a little bit of the New Avengers story um, even though you're, if it says previously in Avengers, you're like, dude, no, it's not. 
And you'd only know that if you read New Avengers. Um, but the Cabal is getting their dues here, all right? The Cabal, which is so great, name war, Thanos going out, and Corvus Glaive killing all the worlds. Um, previously, dialogue in this one is different. New Avengers number 29. Um, but Namor's fall is continued. Um, there's uh, Richard Reed from Earth 1610. I think that, yeah, yeah, 616, 1610. And uh, he's checking in on the uh, incursion. There's a small script in here. Abe Buells, shout out to you. What's the small script when they knock Namor off that little floating platform? Um, so, yeah, incursion to incursion. And previously dialogue again, different uh, panel altogether. Um, yeah, so they're getting the skin of the god. That's the manifestation of the universe's multiverse that the Beyonders took down. I mean, you know, Hickman is almost going Grant Morrison. Those in the know know what I just said. <laughs> she, she are going to destroy Earth. We've seen that in Infinity, which is when I pretty, pretty much just came into comic books. Um, Rocket has some really good one-liners, one-worders, one actually, just one word. Well, stuff from years ago came back. I swear to God, in this one, and this is the this is getting current now. Um, two months, we're ready to go, right? Um, Soul's hammer that Tony built, and it was almost like a jail for a bit. That comes into play again. The planet killer from the Infinity event, from the Makers, the big ship that comes back, um, and of course Earth fights back. Um, man, that was before Inhumanity, before Original Sin. That's really cool stuff, actually. A retcon that far back. But which doesn't do that is freaking Avengers World, which was the spinoff after Infinity. Dude, this doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make sense at all. You have Hyperion's in the Savage Land. He's supposed to be in Multiverse. You have Night Mask, still an adult. He's been using his power. Should go, so like a star brand uh, killer or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, killer powers, but not where he's supposed to be. Um, yeah. This, this says before time's run out, but it's not connected at all. And I don't like that. That's not really cool to us, and we have to pick and choose. But that's another thing that I'm doing for you. I'm trying to get as much as I can so you know what to buy instead of uh, me picking and choosing, and then we don't know what the hell's going on. Avengers World, uh, who, who is that? Barbieri. I don't know. I don't know Spun Sunspot's powers, but they're really cool in this one, Sunspot. But this uh, Avengers World... You know, bridges several titles, even the left from Infinity, but it doesn't now make sense. I mean, oh, by the way, Smasher's sexy in this. That's the one good thing about Avengers World. They make Smasher very sexy. I uh, don't know her real name, actually. Uh, it's fast-paced, maybe almost too fast-paced, but, you know, it's fun. Cyclops and the Star Jammers cameo, but it doesn't really fit with Cyclops and where Star Jammers are. Again, Avengers World, it's off the reservation. Um, really quickly, we have Christopher Yost, who I really enjoyed when he was doing Avenging Spider-Man to sort of bridge all the superior stuff, Superior Spider-Man, which I believe was Dan Slott. Um, but yeah, this is all the Juggernaut. I don't know about the Juggernaut so much. Um, it's disconjunct to the rest of the Marvel um, storylines. He held it all together, but... Um, yeah, I think really what happened with Christopher Yost in this title is that he did a lot of uh, major motion picture, Thor 2 and uh, Avengers Assemble and stuff like that. Earth, Earth Mightiest Heroes, he did that. All right, so we're going into single people. Should go fast. Now Magneto, Colin Bunn, he got very um, busy, let's just say. Um, actually got a little bit overextended. He did The Empty Man. I don't know if you read that, one through six. Just, just fell flat on its face. But... This Magneto is probably more important than Rick Remender's Axis. So, like, he was actually doing better work for the Axis storyline or crossover event theme um, than Rick Remender was. Briar Raleigh now is sort of Magneto's sidekick. Um, she's at the newsstand. There's, I mean, again, Justin Jordan's getting overextended with Spread and all those other ones, Dark Gods, etc. And I know him from Luther Strode, which is really good. And, you know, I think he did some... Green Lantern a little bit. All right, moving on. Um, but it, it's it's this is a wonderful, great single title. He surrenders to Shield, which matches the cover, but he obviously he has other things behind his reasoning for surrendering to Shield. Um, so and notice they changed the acronym. Everything is now copacetic between what Shield actually means. Oh yeah, this is the one. This is the one that they shred. <laughs> they shred. Sabretooth, and he died also in Rick Remender's Uncanny Avengers number two, the, the reboot. Have you ever seen Robot Chicken that they're trying to kill Wolfman? No, yeah, a werewolf, 
and you only can kill them with the silver bullet. So then they basically like take them, grind them, eat them, shit them out, and then the dogs are gonna come back to life. Seth Green, fucking genius, man, genius. All right, so uh, also, um, let's see, he exhumes a body in this one. I guess he's moving like the metal within the dirt. Not too sure how he does that. I also learned about the swastika man in this one. If you want to learn, it's Magneto 16. But there's a, it's a symbol of like purity and peace. And then in the Indian culture, it meant something else. Um, I think it means God in Hindu, the actual swastika. So that's very interesting. I love to learn comics. Very much like Brian K. Vaughn and Why the Last Man. God, I hope that one's right. All right, so pretty gruesome finish on this one. He snaps a neck. How do you snap a neck unless there's metal in it? Don't know. Maybe the filling's in his teeth. I'm not too sure, um, but uh, it's like Colin Bunn meets Justin Jordan spread in this one, actually. There's a lot of crazy red tongue things, whatever. There's also, at the very end, there's a look at the flowers moment, if you know what I mean. I really wish this one came up sooner. This is absolutely wonderful. Nick Spencer, he did uh, Superior Foes of Spider-Man. I'll definitely be getting the trade paperback in this. I was not excited for it at all, but it is just so slapstick. The asides, the quips, the illusions, the throwbacks. It's like nonstop. The guy is great. Nick Spencer, thumbs up, dude. Hitting it out of the park. You know, a good, you know a good comic when the action and the dialogue are like equally paced. You're not watching the whole thing. You're not reading the whole thing. It's very equal. I'm def definitely getting the trade on this. Um, and that was Ant-Man. Number two, I lent to a friend who is taking the class on Monday nights with Justin Jordan. It's like a webinar thing, comics experience, I think it is. So I lent it to her, and there were certain dialogues that I wanted her to see, and that was Ant-Man number two, if that's why you didn't see that. Hawkeye number 21, yeah, is there going to be a 22? Matt Fraction, what are you doing? I mean, Kelly, could you just, like, let him finish something? I mean, he was supposed to do Inhumanity, just totally dropped it. Um, he's done such good work in other things, but I think it's all about image and, and uh, owner-created content, that type of thing. Um, but Jeff Lemire, who's also very overextended, eh, he's doing very well with this. Um, he, it has the background that I didn't know about Hawkeye. Um, it has a little hearkening back to the Hawkeyes um, that Matt Fraction started with uh, Aya, I think it is, David Aya, Aja. So the backstory is there with the brother, um, Barney, right? And uh, so you have the origins. However, I do think Hawkeye is still deaf, which is a carryover from Matt Fractions, which is freaking hilarious. I don't know why that's so freaking funny. And I think that happened to maybe Captain America and Uncanny Avengers when they're out in space, Apocalypse or whatever. It's just so funny when they're not hearing. I'm, maybe that's just me. Woohoo! Uh, where to file annuals. This is sort of an okay uh, Thor annual. There's three different parts of it. But then you have... You don't have one through three. I do, but uh, I just need to get caught up here. Four. Here's five. This is the female Thor. By the way, I do know who the female Thor is. I'm not going to rat out who told me, but I do know who it is. But let me just say, there's probably a red herring in this one. Okay? All right. I know, I know the list. Actually, in the back of, I think, Thor 2, the female Thor 2, there's a list, and uh, Jason Aaron wrote, like, none of those from a uh, reader, viewer, and from that, you can figure out a lot. This is important because uh, I remember this being the, uh, with the Destroyer. Um, I guess Thor's brother, Coulson, is inside the Destroyer trying to get the, the hammer back. Um, but she said five days. She's been Thor for five days. Um, so that gives you a time frame. Oh, man, we're almost there. Kelly Sue DeConnick, the wife of Matt Fraction, is now doing Captain Marvel. And I really wanted to know about Carol, what is it, Mary Jane Danvers. I want to know about her and her Cree background. But this is sort of a slapstick comic. It's not serious. I'm not getting, I mean, space fun. But it's... I'm not really knowing about her powers or where it comes from. Uh, Carol, Susan Jane. Carol Susan Jane Danvers. And obviously number 14 is in the Black Vortex, which is sort of nice. I was already, it was already on my pull list. I'm not going to do it. Jason Latour, and I don't know too much of him. Um, there's a cameo by Punisher and the Captain. And she's sort of vigilante. And when I saw her actually using spray paint on building, 
Why not? I didn't want it. Now, we all know why I got this, right? But I don't have number one. I mean, of course, I have number one. I'm not showing you number one for obvious reasons. And it's okay, but I didn't do the Spider-Verse. I just decided not to do the Spider-Verse, so I stopped at four if I want to get the translator. By the way, that is the correct Kung Fu salute. That should look exactly the same. All right, um, Axis, remember way back when? This is when Nova gets his Avengers ID. Gotta love that. The spin out, like I said before, Carnage knows his real name because he was good, but then turns bad. So Nova's fighting in Carefree, Arizona. Been to Carefree, Arizona when I worked in auto finance, by the way. I like that how he's sort of getting older, taller. I sort of like that. But he needs to fix his helmet, and he fixes his helmet by Doc Green. I don't know, Hulk, Bruce Banner, I don't know if they ever do that anymore. But Doc Green's there, and he fixes a Nova that was screwed up by Claw. How stupid is that? It's Hulk backwards, so Hulk has an inside Hulk called Claw. Dude, if I had an 8-year-old, he'd have a better idea. I don't have an 8-year-old. I have a 13-year-old dog. Um, but it's in an annual. Why did they use him getting fixed in an annual? If you like Deadpool, there's a good part in this for you. Um, so we have uh, Nova 29, which then skips Black Vortex, which I think is 27 and 28. So in 29, um, he hears his dad. There's a bounty for him. Actually screws up what his dad is doing. And on goes the uh, Nova saga after Black Vortex. Moonlight, like I said before, wait, this should be, this is out of order, I can already tell. So 10, 10, 11, 10. I loved Moon Knight, they screwed it up. He gets, a, he gets arrested in this one and he ends up in a plane, but basically Moon Knight goes to a girl. Oh God, who did that? Brian Wood did that. First it was, oh God, it wasn't Alan Moore. It wasn't Alan Moore. Oh, I'm gonna kill myself now. What? Strike that. I forget Moon Knight original author when it comes to this reboot. Brian Wood came in, really screwed it up for me. Conchu returns to Spectre in that one. And then this one, thank you, Colin Bunn, again, overextending himself. But thank you, it made it actually like an action hero again. So thank you. Um, Warren Ellis, that was it. Warren Ellis, who also does trees. That was the guy that uh, rebooted Moon Knight. Very obscure type of writer, that guy. Superior Iron, uh, <laughs> Iron Man. This is the spinoff from Axis that he is now sort of drinking, evil, self-serving, just like he should be, and it's a good thing. Um, so I'm rooting for Tom Taylor on this. And he's an asshole in SF. I live in SF. I'm okay with that. Um, you know, I like to see him in Alcatraz, you know, Stark Towers on Alcatraz. And you have Mark Wade, Daredevil. Um, Mark Wade's Daredevil is in San Francisco, so obviously the first couple of issues, Matthew Murdock saying hello to Tony Stark, what the hell are you doing? Cool little throwback uh, cover. I don't care about the Teenage Abomination. I don't know why we're supposed to care about the Teenage Abomination. They finally let it go when Pepper is now getting the eight-year-old artificial intelligence Stark to take the other guy's brain. <laughs> Pretty weird twist there. See how it happens. All right, so Cyclops, the reason why I wanted ended up on this last single non-group title is because it leads right into Black Vortex, we're almost done. And if you actually listen to all of this, Word up to you, dude. Send me a PM. I'll send you this game. I'll send you my game. Easy peasy. All right, so Shiar, Shiar have big loot to trade for, and this one, I started on one eight, is the first mention of Vortex. Let's see if we have a date, and no, we don't have a date. But the first mention of the Black Vortex was in this, and I had to go back because I think it was in 11 or something, the reference that the fact that in number eight, they actually talked about the Black Vortex. Sort of cool. Um... Black Vortex isn't going to be that big of a deal. I think they're closing it up next week or in two days. But uh, cover matches here. Really like that. Uh, you have the torch to the dab, but it's sort of pretend. And, and I remember the story. That's another thing that's starting. I, I, since I read so much, this is just Marvel. I have a stack of DC and a stack of Image and a stack of others. Um, if I can remember, if I pick it up and go, yeah, I know that Cyclops storyline was this without me having to read the previously. I know that it's a good, it's good writing, and that's Tom Taylor, right? No, Layman. Uh oh, Layman. I don't know a Layman. Layman's new. Do you guys know Layman? Why did I say Tom Taylor? Huh? Whew. So escaped, captured, duel. Um, yeah, Layman, man. Okay, so last one. Then we have 
is the reference to number eight here, ties it in, and the next one is uh, Black Vortex. Also, there's a tie into to all new X-Men number 39 in there, so a little Easter egg. Last but not least, we have the Black Vortex, and I'll tell you what, people, this, out of all the different themes, crossovers, and events, this is just fun outer space fun. You have Sam Humphreys um, and other writers to do the Alpha. The Omega's coming out in two days. And then what they did very well um, is that, actually not on two and not on four, I need to get Legendary Star-Lord for number three. Um, and basically what Black Vortex is, is a power-up. And when I looked at it, I was like, that is a power-up. It's just the uber of everyone. Um, and actually, let me just do this, and I only do this very, very few times. And number two, which is Guardians of the Galaxy number 24, and gives you the power-ups of everyone. Now, not everyone will be this way, but it's sort of a glimpse as if they were to be power-upped. And that is Guardians of the Galaxy number 24, and that's chapter two in the Black Vortex. Then we have uh, chapter four, I believe, yes, and then what they did was so smart. Please, everyone else, take this lesson because it's what we need. If you're doing seven different titles, put the icon up there and put the chapter, oops, icon over there, logo, and put the chapter there. Uh, it's the first time we have young Cyclops uh, reunited with the time displaced uh, all new X Men. That's a really sweet moment in this one. Um, Cyclops and Jean Grey have a moment and they're trying to figure out, you know, do you want to power up because Jean Grey was the Phoenix and. Or wait, and then he was the phoenix and killed Xavier. So this power-up thing is becoming an issue. Um, and it sort of goes with the Cyclops in his own title, but not really because he was liking these, this pirate's daughter, and that doesn't really come through here. Um, again, so now we're on Chapter 6, though. Um, Guardians uh, team-up number 3. It's the first time that we... You know, I'm not a completist. I didn't get the Legendary Star-Lord, but I'll end up getting it now. Um, so I'll know I'll miss some chapters, but um, what I really liked in this one, I got to do it. Sorry. If you held with me this long, you're going to keep with it. <laughs> Something really cool with this. That's good crossover continuity. That's the actual writing that Phil Coulson was doing in, in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I like that, you know, because it's Kree. We're talking about Kree here. Poor Hala. Hala. Remember I said from the trial of, trial of Jean Grey, she did not use that specific power, like she got all crazy purple or whatever. She actually uses it in here. Um, don't want to do a uh, spoiler. Instead, I'll just say, hello, what happened to the Kree world? Um, and uh, also, I really liked how the retcon of Elder Beast is going back to the first, second issue of all new X-Men. And that is, yeah, Brian Michael Bendis, which makes sense. And he's still contending with the fact of what he did. He can't fix the, the timeline. And uh, this one, yeah, Nova. Nova actually says power up. I, you know, whether you want to Uber it or Black Vortex superpower, but he actually says power up, which is sort of funny. Um, Thane, let me just, this is a longstanding question. I used to have those in the previous vlogs. Thane, son of Thanos, put Thanos and Corvus Glaive and I think Proxima Midnight in this gelatinous cube hardened and amber or whatever. How did Thanos get out? Did they ever show that ever? Please, someone tell me when that ever happened. Now he's talking about, I'm going to kill the humans that kill my flock. Where the, where the hell is this thing getting all mad about? I, I just, I try to get everything. Try to, you know, delineate everything from infinity to inhumanity, original sin. I don't know where this came from. There is an Animal House reference in that one, which is hilarious. Um, the brood. The brood are now involved now, and they're going to go into people's skulls and lay eggs. Just disgusting for the sake of being disgusting. But there is a hiccup in Sam Humphreys. This is Sam Humphreys. Yes, the previously is wrong. I always want to point that out. Previously is wrong. He, Thane did get the Black Vortex, but not the way they said in this. Just be correct, people. Right? Can we ask for, ask for that? Um, we have Iceman, uh, Groot, Young Cyclops, Escape from Knife's Jail. Yes, and this is when they're talking about, do you want to be the Phoenix again, and should you power up? So there's a lot of parallels there between uh, younger Scott not wanting to power up, and then elder Scott's Phoenix heirs. Um, somehow Bobby turns into some elf. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, so then we go to, what? Yeah, Captain Marvel, and this is Kelly Sue DeConnick. And, you know, we got Thane BV, they're 
Ubered up, and Carol decides against it, which is cool. And hopefully that's not a spoiler. Um, and then, uh, so it's all about Kitty. Goes down to Kitty Pride, and this is what is the last one. It's all about Kitty Pride, even though we see knife. Well, actually, father and son is what we see here. So we got uh, Captain Marvel going over to Kitty, and Kitty then needs to decide. And I have no idea what a Vulcan proverb is. Only Nixon can visit the White House, or. Nixon can visit China. I don't, I don't understand that. I am now going to start breathing. If you lasted this long, you guys freaking rock. Guys and gals. As Will Wheaton says, play more games!